radicals and exponents. So I want us to consider this problem for a second. 8 to the power of n squared is equal to 8. Well, there's something interesting that's going on here. What is n such that 8 to the power of n squared is equal to 8? So using our power of a power rule, that would mean that 8 to the power of 2 times n is equal to 8. And if there's no value there, that means that's 8 to the power of 1. So we would have to have 2 times something gives us 1, which means that n must be equal to a half. So 8 to the power of a half to the power of 2 is equal to 8. And that makes sense. But we also have to think about the fact that um, we know that if you were to take the square root of 8 and then square it, you would also be left over with 8, since the uh, square root is just the opposite of squaring. That means that the square root and square always nullify each other. So what that means is that 8 to the power of 1 half is actually equal to the square root of 8. So all this work with roots that we've been doing is actually just uh, a way of writing these rational exponents, or that is exponents with fractions. A radical is just a convenient way of writing an exponent of a fraction, like 1 over n. So if you have x to the power of 1 over n, that's the same as the nth root of x. So if we have x to the power of 1 half, we can write that as a radical by writing x to the power of 1 half is equal to the square root of x. And I'm not going to write the 2 here in that index spot because I don't have to do that for square roots. We can also go the opposite way. We can write a radical with a rational exponent. Again, rational just means fraction. So root of 5y is equal to 5y to the power of 1 half. Again, no index there. That means it's actually a 2. So it's 5y to the power of 1 over 2. Let's do the same thing. We have this, what we call a mixed radical here. So uh, we have a 7 outside, but that doesn't change anything. We'll just do 7 times 4x to the power of 1 third. Because we have 3 in the index, we must have 3 in the denominator of the uh, exponent. So now if we have a problem where we have a where we're asked to simplify something with a exponent with a fraction in it, we can solve these problems by rewriting this as a radical. So uh, the negative 16 to the power of 1 over 4, I can rewrite this as the fourth root of negative 16. And because negative 16 is there in the brackets, it must be all within the radical. And as we know, because this is an uh, even root, a fourth root, we can't take the fourth root of a negative value. So uh, I'll just write no solution. If we have negative 16 to the power of uh, 1 quarter, we have to think about our bed mass rules, which say brackets first, but then exponents second. So if we're dealing with exponents, it means that the 16 to the power of 1 quarter has to be dealt with first. So that would be negative the fourth root of 16. And because that negative is now on the outside, it doesn't affect our simplification. We can take the fourth root of 16. That would be equal to 2. So that's negative 2. And if we have 16 to the negative 1 quarter, well, now we have to use our exponent rules, which say that if you have a negative 
exponent, and we've seen this before, if you have x to the power of negative n, it's equal to 1 over the power of x to the n. So that means that this is actually the same as 1 over 16 to the power of positive 1 over 4, or 1 over the fourth root of 16, which again is 2, so 1 over 2.